Happy Independence Day, everybody. I just want to share a few thoughts of mine on what this day means to me um, on this uh, very important day, at least for, for us Americans here. So first thing I want to head off with is I called it Independence Day, not 4th of July. Um, I know it's the same date, but I think we, we should do that to remind ourselves what exactly it is we're celebrating. It's not the invention of the hot dog and the barbecue or anything like that. Um, you know, it's important to keep that in our mind and not just call it the 4th, um, at least the way I see it. It's important to, to call it Independence Day. That's, that's what really matters here. Um, I'd also encourage everybody, I know it's a little late now, but to, to do something to actually celebrate that independence, perhaps produce, produce a little bit more of it, uh, produce your freedom, of course. Um, going to a parade is perfectly fine. That is a, a way of, of celebrating and have a, having a good time. And, um, you know, I'm being happy about the fact that we, that we can, um, do so many of the things that we can in this country. Um, but I also want to talk a little bit about what Independence Day means to me. And it's not just about independence from the British in my mind. It's really about casting off tyranny as a whole, um, the conditions leading up to the American Revolution. Um, if we look through our, our history, um, it wasn't just that they didn't feel like being a part of this particular country, uh, you know, of, of Great Britain or, or one of its colonies. It was that they were sick and tired and, and fed up of um, the restrictions and, and burdens placed upon them. So I think that's important that we don't forget that piece of the equation as well. It's not just, oh, that's the birth of America. It's they got fed up over something. Let's not forget that that's why this all happened. Um, another big thing that maybe a lot of people don't talk about with this whole whole day, but I want to just point out to you guys, is that when America declared its independence from Great Britain, from England, way back when, 1776, um, they were taking kind of a leap and they were saying that we don't need government to thrive because there was no U.S. government. They kind of knew they'd put something together and that people would be all right. And there was certainly some infrastructure and trade and all that going on here. But they were saying that, you know, we're pretty pretty sure we can do this without without um, a, a government as a whole, at least in the in interim. And we can, we can make our own choices as to how we uh, organize and, and govern and, and, and rule ourselves. Um, and I think that's that's a big thing, um, big lesson we can take away uh, when we sometimes get perhaps a little too um, convinced that you know only government can do certain things. I tend not to agree with that. They had, they had you know the the Brits doing everything for them effectively. Um, they were doing all the governmental roles, although they weren't doing such a wonderful job. Um, the Americans had none of that control, and they said, you know what that's fine, we don't really need those, we can take care of those things ourselves. So it's a huge, huge leap that I, I think we don't appreciate enough. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is, I know it's not the same date, uh, but outside of the Declaration of Independence, what what precipitated, um, what was the line in the sand that precipitated this, this revolution and then the signing of the Declaration of Independence? And really it was, um, it was firearms confiscation. If you look at through your American history, you'll find the first you know, that so-called shot heard around the world at, at Lexington. Um, the reason the British were marching towards Lexington and then Concord um, was to get to the powder stores at, at Concord and the firearms there and take them away from the, the colonists. Now, the colonists, in in light of the, you know, other things that they saw weren't fair, they're being taxed without representation, and they weren't uh, able to govern themselves the way they thought they would, and the British government was really giving a hard time and taking them quite taking quite a bit from them. Um, and then on top of you know, the hostilities rose, of course, and then finally we get to a point where the British are trying to seize the weapons of, of the British at that time, uh, of the American colonists, but they were certainly British subjects. So they march out to do that, and then the colonists say, if we lose this little piece here, there's no, we have nothing left to use to fight against this tyranny. That was, that was kind of their thinking, and that's why that was the line in the sand and, and got this whole thing going. Um, I think there's a lesson there as well, that if you, if you have a government that you don't appreciate that is being too um, overbearing, tyrannical, and, and doing things to people that you don't appreciate, 
that if they then on top of that choose to to take the only means we have of of resisting them the only effective means you have of resisting them that's that's kind of a huge deal it doesn't always lead to um you know an authoritarian regime but in order to actually have that authoritarian regime you do have to first start with um, depriving people of the the ability to protect themselves because if you went to impose an authoritarian regime and they did have the ability to protect themselves they would protect themselves from from the authoritarian regime um, so enough of that heavy stuff Back to what I'm doing to, to celebrate my independence, um, I'm actually ordering, or have ordered, it's on the way, um, some yeast for mead making. I know I've done some cider videos that maybe you've seen here. Um, so I'm going to branch out and, and I'm going to venture into mead next so I have a little more variety. Again, my goal is to, to produce all of the alcohol I consume. Um, to, to cut down on cost and to, to have more control and over the product and, and have something I think is a better product. So rather than getting sick of drinking cider, I know there's a ton of ways you can make cider, but I'm going to start down the mead path as well. Um, the other thing I want to we'll jump back to the heavy stuff for a second, if you don't mind. Um, one thing I discourage on this day is, is a blind allegiance to the state. I am certainly not opposed to the founding principles of the United States of America. I just think we have yet to live up to them in a lot of, in a lot of areas. Um, so as much as we're celebrating this wonderful day, let's make sure we're celebrating the ideals and not blindly celebrating everything this country does because nobody's perfect and no country is perfect. Therefore, if you're saying woohoo, America, no matter what it does, well, I kind of have a problem with that. I'm all for American ideals always and forever, um, the founding principles, but I am not for uh, blindly um, saying yeah. Because I think as soon as you get to that point of, of just celebrating something because of what it is and you have that level of allegiance, you don't necessarily try to, to criticize and improve the areas where you can. Um, you know, if you just think something's the best, you're, you're not really uh, too keen on improving it. So um, it's for a love of those principles and of this country that, that I don't do that. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. And um, the last somber note I wanted to leave on is that the, the men who signed the Declaration of Independence, of course, um, knew they were putting on, on the line their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor. Um, very important part being being lives, of course, in that equation. So I think when we come down to this whole freedom and, and liberty issues and all of this, um, that an inconvenience to go to produce, to make an effort to produce your own freedom and liberty um, just isn't an excuse. Um, you know, it's, it's an inconvenience and maybe some money spent and some effort and some weekends given up that we would have liked to have been, you know, laying on a beach maybe with our toes in the sand or something, which there's a place for that too. But uh, an inconvenience because we'd rather be doing that or vegging out or something like that. Um, we have it pretty good if we can cite those inconveniences as reasons for not pursuing liberty and freedom. Um, you know, they're worried about their lives, not how inconvenienced they might be. So with that, I know it's been a, maybe a little bit depressing, but um, I just want to share my thoughts and, and my views on what this day means to me and use it as a little reminder to produce your freedom or life will produce your chains. Thank you and I hope you had a wonderful Independence Day.